and we are back. Oh, the NBA in-season tournament continued. The Celtics, well, everybody was talking about Cleveland's 15 and all feet clear, and then they just came in and ran into the champs and had to get brought back to reality just a little bit. But it was a good game, though. It was a good game. Celtics with, with the win. But, man, yo, NBA and these refs, man, they're so bad. These refs are so bad. Like, they don't know what a travel is. I just saw, uh, I watched Evan Mobley push Tatum as he's going up for the rebound. They don't call it. Sorry, that was like blatant, too. That was blatant. blatant, and then he traveled before he dunked, and I was like, what is going on here? But it was a really good in-season uh, in game between these two. But the, my takeaway from the Cavs, they're only going to go as far as Evan Mobley takes them because I think he's the most unique player on that team because he's got – He's got skills. He got everything. Yeah, and it's just when your guards are that side, that height, you're gonna have. He's gonna have to be the focal point of, for for them to take that leap. Yeah, he's a dual threat. Yeah. Jared, what's his name, still there? Yeah, Allen's still there. He's nothing like Moby, so Moby yeah, has yeah. to be the one to turn the corner. Granted, you're gonna get, your, your all-star guys are going to be the right. guys that put it up, but you got to be the most efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um... Yeah, and he's actually shooting the three this year. He wasn't. He wasn't shooting it. He, well, he shot it last year, but he, I think I saw he was like at thirty eight percent this year with the amount he's taking. But uh, and then just another day at the office with the Celtics, just get, get a dub. I mean, have to blow in, have to blow in that first game. Right, I mean, man. Right. <laughs> Wrong with these, these right. fools. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Better get that second game. Oh, uh, Jeff, and it was it was a balanced five guys, six guys in double figures. Pay pay pressures coming out. You might be a six man of the year this year. Man. Shout out, shout out, Jalen Brown. He's even passing the ball. He had like seven, think, seven, eight assists. Hey, yeah, I think this is like back to back games where he had five plus assists. Uh, let me look that that up right now. Yeah, but look what happened. Yeah, back to back games. He oh. had he had seven last game there and then go. eight this go. game. There you go. So, look what happens when yeah. everybody's moving. Yeah, his assists are up four, four assists, and and the, and the seven foot is not even there yet. So all these teams are talking about these guys are injured, these guys are injured, and then we got somebody that's just we got a whole unicorn that's just chilling, waiting. So uh, they got, I think they got Washington coming up next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, the, yeah, they got Washington uh, on Friday, but man, one of the franchises, they just need to disband those guys, man. When they going to bring back that, the Wu-Tang W? Yeah. <laughs> when they going to bring that back, the blue uniforms? I was just thinking that, like, like, we're fortunate enough to be alive and, like, we remember when the Bullets got switched to the Wizards, bro. Yeah. Like, they got to bring them unis back. Yeah, uh, other, other in-season games. <laughs> Other season games, San Antonio, they was a day one. They beat OKC 110, 104. I watched that game. It was actually a good game. But yeah, like I think four of the four of the leading scores were out, were out and bunch of uh, short guys out there hooping. Yeah. There Vince no, Staples out there. No seven footers out there, which is rare. They're, I mean Zach Collins. He oh, don't play, man. He don't play hey, like they I'm talking about them, you know, them seven pluses. Uh, <laughs> them lurches, you know, them, them door openers. And then Dalton, and then the Lakers, they beat the Jazz 124-118. Dalton Connect, he had 39, I think. He had a career high. I think he made like nine threes or something like that. Boy, that boy good. Yeah, he is good. Yeah, yeah he had 37. with. Yeah, he went nine for 12 from the three-point line. So, yeah. More games coming, but. That's the NBA part of this. Uh, John Jones was whooping behind this weekend. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. You want me to Yeah, go ahead, take? man. Shout out to John Jones, the greatest <laughs> for what we've seen so far. Hey, he said he only fighting like champions. He's not. Yeah, yeah. Oh, as he should. Yeah. As he should. Yeah, I mean, hey, man, when this dude's on his head. He's showing when he's focused, he ain't to be messed with. And, like, you done defended, you done defended your lightweight belt, heavyweight. It's like, bro, you should be able to pick and choose now. It ain't all that you pick who you fight who we pick. Nah, bro, I'm the champ. I've been the champ. Right. Nobody's taking it from me, so I pick who I fight now. Nah, facts, facts. And uh, he's the draw anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, uh. yeah. Yeah, people want to see People want to see the stars. Uh, the, um, well, boxing. 
Mike Tyson and Jake Paul have. Oh my gosh! So apparently, people are having issues. Netflix, but <laughs> Netflix uh, turned into a soft core. All right. <laughs> 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 there was people having issues watching the fight because Netflix was buffering and things weren't working out the way they're supposed to. And all I say is this was just a big old fleece. <laughs> they, they fleeced everybody. But, I mean, people got what they wanted. They saw Mike Tyson. No. But he was an old man. Nobody really got what they wanted. <laughs> what they wanted to see him knock somebody's head off their neck. Yeah. That ain't happening. I heard he was biting his gloves. Like, my dog, as I told you before the show started, my daughter asked him about the fight. I said, well, since my dog asked me about it, I'll put it on. Once I reminded her that there was two more fights before the main fight, looked at me and said goodnight. <laughs> so, I, and then I went about and turned it, and then you watch something else. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I just, I was, we were saying for the show, like, we don't really have too many childhood heroes. I don't really have many, but, like, watching Mike growing up, I can't, nah, I can't see that. Nah, I can't. Nope. Can't see that. Can't yeah. watch that. Yeah. I, I, I have more respect for that man to watch him go through that. Sorry. Yeah, and just the whole idea of a damn 60 year old man fighting a guy at 27. That's kind of, it's like, what are we doing for here? For a 27 year old man, you think that's cool. Right. It's crazy. Right. For him to walk around with his chest out is nuts. Right. And then for you to get mad at people asking you questions about when you're going to actually fight a real boxer is ridiculous. Right. So, like, get over yourself, man. Like, yeah, he only has. The only thing to give him credit for is for him getting the money, the promotion, and the draw, like getting all this attention. But I mean, the funniest thing when kids was asking me, "Oh, Jake Paul did the win?" I said, "He's not gonna pay himself." (laughs) How is he? How is he? He's not gonna win anything. Right? Like, (laughs) like what we talking about here? As I said last week, I just want this dude to go away, or just this whole Jake Paul thing to go away. But it's not going to go away because there's people that actually find this stuff entertaining, and I don't get why. But What it is is it's the new pros versus Joes. But the pros actually lose now because they're so over the hill, and they're getting paid to lose. Mm -hmm. Pros versus Joes, they both competed. And whoever won, won. Right. There wasn't no setting things up and paying people off. That's the whack thing about it. But, you know. There's more Joes than pro anything. Yeah. So the people are always going to try to, they're always going to want to see the downfall of somebody that they, they, that they held up in the light and, it's, uh, and their arms got tied and I'm yeah. sick of holding them. Right. <laughs> Pedro, what you think <laughs> about this fight? I mean, uh, overall, a great success uh, in terms of the business, the money. Uh, we're talking about uh, 72,000 people in attendance. Uh, 18 million dollars at the gate overall and uh, 60 million uh, viewers uh, around the world. That's an amazing feat, you know? So uh, we gotta give it to Jake Paul and, and those guys. But uh, the illusion that Mike Tyson was going to win, you know, right. You really gotta give it to Mike Tyson. Yeah. He's, the, he's the draw. You're right, the honor of Mike. But I'm yeah. About, you know, promotion. Oh, I get that. Yeah. But if there's no Mike, ain't, ain't there people showing up. Yeah. Is he able, can we even call him Iron Mike nowadays, or is it? I mean, once you get a certain right. age, uh, don't your nickname go away anyways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat Iron Mike. Uh. Oh, by the way, he's, he's going to make, uh, he made $20 million, and I think uh, 40 for Jake Paul. Yeah. That's great for him, but, like, I thought he was already booming with his, with his cannabis business and all this, so, like, I didn't think, I thought he was going to actually fight Jake because I thought he was already doing yeah. well, but we don't know about people's lives and things that... Maybe he because he knew if he really went at him, he probably would have hurt him. <laughs> and I'm talking about Tyson. My whole point is, once somebody steps in your den, whatever happens to them, that's just mm. on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's his den right there. Like, you know what I mean? You don't, nah. You know, more money in your pocket doesn't hurt. Yeah. But as they said, all money ain't good money, and all entertainment ain't good entertainment. And this this is one of those cases. But, yeah. Uh, real quick. Uh, Definitely. Oh, yeah, this fight, the robbery. Yes. The second one. Yeah, she got headbutted three times and opened up a, a crazy cut. Did, did, did they dock points for the headbutts? Uh, at one point, yes, but it wasn't enough. <laughs> I think if you headbutt somebody in a boxing match, you should automatically be disqualified. You can see it there, but yeah, she got, oh my God, a crazy gash. Yeah, you know, I, I seen I the picture. I seen the photo. But yeah, it, I'm just in the belief if you headbutt somebody during a boxing match, you should be automatically disqualified. Now, was it was it on purpose headbutt? Like one of those? I'm not sure. Like a, 
Because if it's on purpose, I'm just going to kick you. Like, forget this. <laughs> yeah. You both get disqualified. You're going to headbutt me, bro? Oh. But three times? Yeah, forget the forget yeah. fight. I'm ripping these girls <laughs> off, bro. Like, nah, dog. Sorry. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, three times is, is crazy. Uh, <laughs> all right, before we get into these interviews and all this stuff, I, so I went, to, I went to New Balance over the weekend to watch um, the New England Basketball League prep showcase, pretty much the uh, prep teams. And, um, yeah, all I got to say is I just I saw players who I watched last year in public schools dominate and be the number one options, and now they were just sitting on the bench or they were getting in the game, getting spark, getting minutes here and there, and I'm just like, what was the point? Like, what's the point? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the point? You're trying to get to where you want to go, but now you went from being a man, and now you're... Uh, one of the guys? Yeah, you just one of the guys. You, you know, in and out, in and out of the game. I uh, can't, even, can't even show your full potential. It's kind of, and this is... The, and we got to have, a lot of people need to have a discussion about this whole, let me get my kids out of public schools and send them to a prep school because I think they're going to go to Division One. Because what's the sense of sending them to a, one of these prep schools if they're going to end up to a school that they're probably going to end up in, they would have ended up in if they stayed at the school they're in? It's all, I think it's all about what type of kid you have. You have to know what type of kid you're raising, that if they can leave, they're going to have that, I want to say determination, perseverance, and foundation to just fight through whatever they come across. Yeah. And some kids, they just don't have that. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I get it. They want kids to go to prep school earlier, but they got to understand. You got guys that come to prep school every year, post-grad, transfers, mm. reclasses. So, like, just work on being good. For one, just believe in your kid that they're going to be good and just support them and just support them along the way and put them in the right positions to improve. And then when they're a junior or senior, they might, you know what I mean, they might, yeah. tr might transfer out their junior, senior year, or they might do a post-grad. But it's like all this forcing kids to go to prep school to be good, that just doesn't always happen because the kid might not have the drive. They might not have the balls to compete. Mm -hmm. And that's okay right. because they might not be old enough to understand that yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like that's why it's it, it's tricky though. So, yeah. it's, but my thing is, everybody got to just worry about what's what's good for them to be successful. Don't worry about what work for Johnny or work for Timothy. <laughs> understand what's gonna work for you and your kid. And what I've seen, and you know, since since I've started going to these prep school games the last couple of years, I've just seen it. I've just seen too many kids that just left left the school where they. They were handed the keys and were, yeah, and then now they just. And, and the funny thing about that, I'm sure we might get backlash and they might be like, well, you went to prep school, you went to, yeah. But I was fitting to stay in scoring as a 17 year old senior. I already paid my dues. I, I put up numbers, so it's like, yeah, I can go prep. And I was the man in prep school. So it's like, we actually learned how to be the man. Right. It wasn't like we, no, we were the man and we understood what to do in prep school. Right. These kids aren't even, they're not even the man yet. So how are you going to understand how to be the man at the prep school right. when the competition's harder? They're not trying to give you the ball because you just got there. <laughs> they're trying to show the coach that, like, bro, who are these postgrads? We we're here every year. Right. So it, it's just, it's just a, it's a weird dynamic, and you, it's like an uphill battle sometimes. You got to fight. Very, very helpful. And also, talking to one parent, uh, one parent who was telling me, well, his son stayed, his son stayed in the public schools because he, but he was saying there was a lot of like a lot of the private schools and prep schools. They wanted, they wanted to get him. They wanted him, but he was just like, his son wanted to play with his friends, and he wanted to have that home play for the home hometown team and. Still hold, upheld that hometown pride, just playing for your hometown school, and I think that's also what's been lost these last several these last several years or so. Is like people don't have their home pro, hometown pride, like to represent your hometown, to bring a trophy to your hometown. Just you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that used to be like that yeah. used to be the big thing, especially when we was coming up, because everybody we knew, it was just like we repping our hometown. And I'm like, no matter what. We rep and we want to play with our friends and all that. But it, it might get back to that once the once the COVID generation is completely washed out, because we're still dealing with kids who don't know what it's like to really play outside freely. Yeah. And that's why we were camaraderie, all that mm -hmm. competing. We see each other throughout the year. We want we want to win. And yeah, I felt like the older generation they promoted. 
<laughs> being proud of, prideful in your city. Yeah. So many kids leave the city to go to high school and stuff like, where is it? There really isn't much pride. The pride ended with their parents. Part of the, reason, part of the prep school situation, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, these kids just don't have pride. This generation of kids are so bent on, they're told to be bent so in touch with your feelings. But you got to be in touch with, like, being a human being, too, and, like, yeah. persevering and not getting in your feelings when you have to... Uh -huh. When you come across an obstacle yeah. to get over it, rather than, bro, I gotta teach kids how to handle their own problems, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. one of them things. Like, you gotta grow up. And, a then, bit. and then, from a, from a, from a viewer's perspective, you know, everybody will always be mad at me, but also, what? you know, people always be mad at me whenever I, whenever I be saying I mean, stuff about. You ain't about talking about anybody in particular. Nah, so nah. But I'm just saying, from from watching all all the players and all the teams, especially here in Lynn, we like some teams. Kids are already playing like they won something. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like they already playing like they've already accomplished stuff. Like they've already won a state championship. Like, you know, like they get on the court, you'll take a you'll take an opponent lightly and stuff I'll like be that. Honest, Cause, bro. Cause, Cause I remember like when you I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah like when when um Tone was coaching English, that that took those championship teams he had. Oh, they ain't take nobody for granted. They was slapping, smacking everybody. Like, we gonna beat y'all. Like, CB's doing that now with his guys. Like, we... It's a culture. Right. It's a culture that was created. Luckily, when Tom was over there, we all were over there, and it was like an open-door policy. It used to come in there. We had practice, got guys shooting around, just because, like, we were never gonna tell the kids they can't get better. Right. And, and, once again, you gotta have guys in place to help that culture, help them understand that culture. Yeah. And you don't take days off. And they used to cry about getting ran so much, bro. But they understood yeah. once they seen. But yeah. once again, we grew up playing outside, always being in shape. Yeah. These kids have to get in shape. Yeah. So they don't even understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and like, yeah, bro, it's just yeah, it's different. Di it's, it's very just, different. It's very different because I hate when I watch. I hate when I watch a game. And I'm like, yo, y'all are way better than this team. Why? Are, why is this game even close? But too, all this starts at home. These kids don't raise themselves. These kids don't dress themselves. You got a point. These kids don't learn how to talk by themselves. These kids don't develop attitudes by themselves. It all starts from the nest. Yeah. These kids' egos don't develop by themselves. Yeah. So, your parents gotta. Yeah, it's great for your kid to have all that, but suppress some of it sometimes. And, t and, and I'm gonna say, my dad ain't tell me he was proud of me until I graduated high school. <laughs> That was 17 years of never hearing I'm proud of you. Yeah, you did a good job of certain things, but like, I'm proud of you? Not to, not to I did something that was actually important. Shoot, my mom ain't telling me till I was in my 20s. But you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They saved it for things that were actually important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just every time you did something. Yeah. So, so it's like dogs getting treats every time you do something. Right. <laughs> These are people. Standards need to be held up here. Yeah. Not here, here, or down here. Yeah. That's why I had to get that off because we got basketball season coming up in after next week. So I just want to get that because there, there's there's so much potential with some of the, with the with the teams here this year. I just want these kids to be out there and focus and play like they haven't won nothing. Just play, go out there and play like you have. Well, you haven't won nothing. So go, <laughs> I, I, go like, out there yeah. and show that that you want it. Like you want to bring a state championship to the school. You want you want it because because if you play like you haven't won anything and you actually play like you want it, you'll actually win something. Yeah. I like to see kids win championships. I tell every kid from St. Mary's, you better get you one. You can't get you three, though. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, yeah. <laughs> you one or two, but you can't be ahead of me now. But we just want to see every kid be successful, and we want this city to continue to, to create champions, man, so they can go on and be champions elsewhere, yeah. be champions in life. Definitely. My bad, Pedro. We got off schedule with that one, but that had to be said because, man, some of the stuff I saw. I, I mean, it's sports-related. <laughs> yeah, you know. But. Yeah.